This is George Ohm, and in 1827 he defined Ohm's law, which is the fundamental definition of three of the most important electrical quantities, voltage, current and resistance. Without Ohm's law we could have no electrical appliances at all. So it stands to reason then that to understand current electricity you're going to need to understand Ohm's law really well and be able to apply it to all situations. He was actually just investigating very large conductors, not the thin copper wires or small resistors that you'll be using. And he was using something called a galvanometer. He didn't have a voltmeter and an ammeter to directly measure voltage and current. He actually needed to derive those two quantities and he defined them in his law. He stated that a quantity called voltage or potential difference to be more correct which is the amount of energy that was given to the charge was directly proportional to the flow of that charge and he worked out ways to measure these two things now in any situation where voltage or any variable is proportional to another variable then that says that this variable equals this variable multiplied by some constant and he actually defined that constant depended upon the length and the width and the material of the conductor and he called that quantity the resistance so here we have Ohm's law the potential difference is equal to the current times the resistance V equals I R so we're lucky then that in the lab we can just use a simple setup like this uh, circuit here to measure the resistance of anything we put between these two terminals here. We've got our power pack which we can vary the supplied voltage and remember that the supplied voltage is going to be different from the voltage across the component which we measure here. This is the terminal voltage or terminal potential difference and the current we measure through here because we know that the current here is going to be the same as the current through this uh, conductor or whatever component we've put here. So we're just going to start by placing a resistor into our circuit. This is a fixed resistor, has very good thermal properties, does not tend to change resistance as we increase the current through it. So what we do is vary the setting on the power pack, the supply voltage, and measure potential difference and current through all of those 10 settings and we should end up with a straight line graph like this and this straight line graph is Ohm's law it shows that voltage is proportional to current that is Ohm's law you can get a lot more out of it though we talked a little bit about if V is proportional to I then they must be related by some constant well this gradient of this graph is that constant. I'm just going to briefly call it K here. Well, what does that constant represent? Well, the gradient is going to be the upwards distance, if you like, the height of the triangle, okay, divided by the base of the triangle, the across distance. And that will be V, which is the maximum V here, divided by I, the maximum I there. So what does that constant K represent? Well if we just do a little bit of rearranging of Ohm's law, V divided by I equals R. So in fact the gradient K is V divided by I, so the gradient K is equal to R. So in this graph the gradient is the resistance of whatever component we've got there. Now I'll just say a word of warning there because this graph has V on the Y axis and I on the X axis. And that is normal because then the gradients are. But sometimes in some exam boards they like to put V on the X axis because V is essentially what we're changing. It's the power pack setting. It's the supply voltage which influences these two. So they often put the V on the x-axis because if you like it is the independent variable. As with all graphs in physics always look closely at what the the axes are representing 
before you do anything and make any conclusions based on the graph. So that's the resistor, and we say that type of resistor is a ohmic resistor. Now we're going to use a lamp. So this is a filament bulb, a filament lamp, and has a very different characteristic as we increase the supplied voltage and measure V and I. So initially, the bulb has a very low resistance. When it's cold, it has a very low resistance. And so what you get is a large increase in current for a small increase in potential difference. And then later on, it has a much higher resistance. So you get a smaller increase in current for a larger increase in potential difference. So what we can say here from our Ohm's law is the gradient here is low. So the resistance is low. The gradient here is high. So the resistance is high. That is the characteristic that most conductors have. Now, the last component we're going to talk about is a fermister. And fermisters have opposite properties in terms of their thermal conductivity properties to most metal conductors. And in fact, initially, you have quite a high resistance, which means that you need a large increase in potential difference to increase the current a small amount. But as it heats up, it gets a lower resistance and actually you get a larger increase in current for a smaller increase in potential difference. Again, think about the spheres of the graph. Down here, we have a large gradient, therefore a large resistance. And here, we have a low gradient, therefore a low resistance. So there we go. I really hope that helps you understand Ohm's law. Remember, if you know in any situation, you know V or I, you can calculate R. Or if you know R and V, you can calculate I. Ohm's law can be applied to any situation at all. It's a fundamental law in physics. Now, if you did like that, then please go ahead and subscribe. Tell your friends as well, please. And likes are always helpful as well. If you've got any comments or additional questions or there's a particular video you'd like to see on this channel, please do add them in the comments. Thank you very much and see you soon.